Hello, I'm Caroline Pass. I'm an art historian, a researcher. My main research area is contemporary art. I work with artists who want to conceptualize and strategize their practice because I propose a methodology-based view on strategies in contemporary art. I've been giving lectures for 18 years. That's a long story. And I should add that I don't teach history of art to a wide audience. I work with artists who need uh, to build strong theoretical foundation and make it the basis of the artistic research. So I've had a chance to hear firsthand about artists' worries, requests, needs, ambitions, and Gradually, being in a theory field, I started to develop tools to help artists in their practical work. Let me show the most frequent requests that tell me about the artist's need or lack of strategizing. I want to understand what I do. I want to be encouraged and inspired, not bored with what I do. I want to work with meaning, context, to work with some kind of metaphysics or with agenda, but don't understand where to start. I want to find a topic to be passionate about for a long time, because I might try a topic and give it up after a while. I work on one topic for a month, then work on another for three months, and at some point I have to give it up because I realize that it's not my thing. Next uh, frequent request uh, is I want to know my way in contemporary art to understand if it is in demand and where I am on the so-called world art map now and who is the art scene made of who who are the key players who is starring and who is emerging well next i want to know who my target audience is and where to find them i want to understand the value of what i do or if anyone needs it sometimes i have trouble explaining what i what i do why to school there is no clarity. There is no clear path. Well, do I have to consciously strategize? Is it necessary? No, you don't have to. You can do without it. But conscious strategizing have some bonuses because artists make up a certain algorithm and it works, you know, it works straight. If we do not consciously strategize, then it works confusingly with gaps or with some blind spots. Well, I strongly believe that strategizing is a crucially important step for, for an artist to succeeding in her or his career. A lack of artistic strategy or a confused strategy, that's what brings artists to me as a mentor and a theoretician. I help them unravel the things they are preoccupied with, build the artistic strategy and help them with the research they will base their practice on. And now let's look at the advantages of artistic practice strategizing. It definitely helps artists to see the root clearly, to work with what is interesting and in a way that is interesting, to understand what, why, and how to. Understanding of this what, why, and how to takes away doubts and insecurities. Strategizing, strategizing I'm sorry, is essential if you want to make each step complementary to the others so that everything go that everything goes together and not scattered in different di directions to make sure your artistic practice is whole not fragmented or contradictory in this lecture we'll first talk about artistic strategies and artistic practice strategizing then i'll tell you about the tool I've uh, invented and now use in my mentoring practice for art with artists who want to strategize their artistic practice. And of course, I show you examples of artistic strategies as well. This lecture tells about 
artistic strategies and artistic practice strategizing, and I hope it will identify the benefits of the artistic-based approach. And before we go any further, I'd like to focus on one word in this phrase to emphasize the word practice. What does practice mean? Let me give a satisfying definition of practice, satisfying for me as a researcher. Practice is a logical sequence of steps aimed at obtaining a certain result and forming a structure that acquires fundamental stability through repetition. So, practice is a repetition of an activity as a way to improve the skill, the ongoing pursuit of a craft or profession. This practice can include methods, ideas, materials, as well as tools and skills. If we talk about artistic practice, we also refer to the ways in which an artist goes about her or his work in a repetitive way to make artistic products. And here are two types of artistic approach to this practice, of an artist's approach to artistic practice. In the first approach, we encounter artists who've got an idea of the product they want to get, but they haven't got qualitative knowledge of the actions they are to perform to get this product. In this case, artists are forced either to invent an algorithm of actions or to look for an alternative algorithm of actions. Actually, this invention and this search gives the creative character to the to their work. Well, it gives inspiration, struggling with materials, or search for some methods or algorithms. However, a fundamentally different approach is possible when artists have an idea of the product they want to get and they have qualitative knowledge about the actions they are to perform to guarantee that they will receive the product they want. We encounter this type of creativity with extra professionals who have a full mastery of their craft and who are able to consciously approach and perform their practice. Well, it means to strategize it. And here we come to strategizing. So, what is strategizing in general? Strategizing is a planning process. For short, strategizing is essentially about choice. What we'll do to achieve specific goals and objectives. These goals and objectives lead to the accomplishment of a targeted mission. To strategize is to implement the best strategy for getting what you want. As far as we're talking about strategizing for artists, it's necessary to give a definition of an artistic strategy. Artistic strategy is also about making choices, which provide an artist with some measure of a sustainable competitive advantage. The most satisfying definition for me is the following. Artistic strategy is a consciously, reflectively, or unconsciously, intuitively constructed principle of a certain practice to create an artwork. When we define, when we were defining strategizing, we realized that it might be conscious or intuitive. Let's set down these conclusions. Process of strategizing has nature, conscious or unconscious. Strategizing has timing as well, or period. All practical actions performed by an artist mean either short-term goals, work, uh, an artwork, I'm sorry, an artwork, a specific project, body of works, exhibition, or long-term goals, mission, long project, or even lifelong project, perhaps artist's brand. When strategizing, keep it in mind. Set clear targets and set timing. Because sometimes an artist needs a strategy to uh, to make an artwork or to make an application for a contest. And sometimes an artist is strategizing artist's brand. And these objectives will require very different timing and components of the strategy. Now, let's look at the possible components of artistic practice strategizing which I've discovered. When artists strategize their practice, 
What steps do they go through? What are the elements of strategizing? I'll try to summarize the components of artistic practice strategizing in the following chart. Here are four components we are to define for strategizing artistic practice. Four arrows, four components. Form, contact, role, expected functionality. We may be aware of them while strategizing or not. Strategizing can be conscious or intuitive, as we told. So some components could be planned or thoroughly built, or they might be intuitive. So first component is form. Material and methods I work with. That's media I chose. And uh, it also includes productive container. Productive container is the result. Installation, a performance, a painting, a sculpture. Second component is content. What I express through the form. Meanings, feelings, emotions, my cultural background, ideas, philosophical concepts, discourse, agenda, context. Third component is my role as an artist, either critical or analytical or self-defining. Fourth component, expected functionality of my product. What it is aimed at. My career, an open call, a contest, art residence, and who it is addressed to. Viewers, collectors, customers, institutions. So, fourth component is about functionality. What is the goal of artistic practice strategizing? The goal of artistic practice strategizing is not just the making of an artwork, but making of an artwork with a certain functionality. If we look again at our chart, the fourth component is expected functionality. So this is the key point here. What artistic practice strategizing is aimed at? If the aim of artistic practice in whole is to create a product, an artwork, then the aim of artistic practice strategizing is to create a functional product, a work with expected functionality. In other words, it aims to meet the requirements of the recipient. This includes institutions and individuals, collectors or customers. So, the goal of artistic practice strategizing is creation of an artwork prepared for its functional use in certain, very clear circumstances. Artists who strategize create artworks with expected functionality. By the way, contemporary relevance is also a goal of artistic practice strategizing. Strategizing is for artists who want their art to be perceived as contemporary by viewers, conforming to current ideas and trends in art. The result of strategizing the functional product becomes a sort of a marker, a sign to a viewer that indicates whether artists' work is dealing with current issues or not, how relevant or applicable it is to today, how it relates to the present time. An artist's work could be important and meaningful in contemporary art discourse. As a result of this, artistic practice could get relevant, contemporary, and in demand. Strategy is needed to meet the expectations of the art world. Let's look again at our chart and summarize. Okay, there are elements. Form. Content, role, expected functionality. Some artists know the form that they will, that their work will take. Some artists have a pool of ideas or work within certain context, but haven't decided on a form yet. There are artists' roles. An artist could bring up layers, cultural, social, economic, political. Do I want to perform as, a, as an analytic or as a critic? How I relate to the outer world? Am I critical of anything? Or perhaps I'm apologetic? Some artists uh, work within the history of arts, entering the dialogue with tradition. Some work with up-to-date topics. Some artists 
tackle important social issues. There are artists who are interested in their own storytelling, myth-making, and cosmogonies. Other artists are politically involved. So, and finally, what is the function of the product I create? The function is subject-oriented. The function is always subject-oriented. Everything we make is focused on someone. We don't work in a vacuum, but for the viewers, for the perception of other subjects. Although an artist can claim that the artwork is for eternity, of course. Now, I'm going to tell about the tool I've made a subject of my research and use in my mentoring programs for artists in order to somehow make artistic practice strategizing easier, I've created some kind of scenarios or presets or patterns of trendy artistic strategies. Each of them summarizes and reflects on some trend in artistic practice strategizing in contemporary art. I've identified 27 scenarios. Other researchers will classify a different number. How do these presets work? They provide you with some settings which already contain combinations of components we've described earlier. When an artist comes across and interacts with one of these scenarios, we should understand that everyone will implement it differently. The tool helps, but certainly doesn't exhaust all the possibilities of strategizing. Well, to sum up now, what does two? of artistic practice strategizing provide. When you strategize your artistic practice, the whole structure of your art is put together. You can analyze what other artists are doing and, if necessary, adopt their experience, or you can develop your own visual language. When you have deciphered the trendy strategies, you can follow so-called dress code in contemporary art and meet its requirements. When you have an understanding of the message you want to carry out, then you can conceptualize your artistic ideas. You can justify what you're doing and describe it, explain that. Strategic thinking is essential skill that can be developed by an artist. It'll help you to shape an artistic statement using contemporary practices.